All right, I've got a lesson for you today that basically is going to explain to you the two things that are essentially working against you from being able to maintain weight loss. We see this a lot of people will lose and gain the same weight over and over and over again. And why does that keep happening? Okay, there's actually two reasons. One is kind of a psychological reason and one is a physiological reason. So let me go ahead and explain it to you. So let's just say, as an example here, you are... Um, here's a little stick person, this is you, right? And you continually, for some reason, always weigh, this is going to be a scale, a certain weight, okay? So let's just say, for example, um, easy, easy math, um, this is 200 pounds, right? And no matter what you do, you always seem to end back up at 200 pounds. Okay, well, the first reason, um, let me go with the, the physiological reason, is, you know, you, you join a program, it could be a program like mine, and you lose, let's say you lose 20 pounds, right? So we have our, you know, six-week 20-pound challenge. People lose 20 pounds in six weeks, happens all the time, okay? Some people keep the weight off, and then why, why do others don't? Okay. Well, you might look and say, well, the obvious answer is they didn't stay. If you know those who didn't stay, well, now you know they were working out consistently, they were paying attention to nutrition, they were part of your support group, and now they don't have that, so they 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 gain naturally gain the weight back, right? Okay, that's a pretty that's a pretty obvious reason right there. But the other thing that kind of goes with that is it's about time. Okay, basically, what there is is your body. Basically, what makes what's called a set point, okay? It's a set point theory. It basically says that when I deviate from the norm, my body finds a way to get back to that weight. And you've probably seen this where, like, um, if you've gained weight, let's say, you know, you, you deviated and you gained, you know, five pounds, but you always manage to, to kind of get back to that line. So you... Whether how many pounds you go up and down, you always seem to be back at that 200. Well, from a physiological standpoint, when we think about set point, the body doesn't like change. It likes to remain the same. So things will start to happen. Like, for example, if I lose a bunch of weight, I might, um, I might find that I'm hungry more often. So I eat more. I have more triggers that way. Uh, my metabolism will slow. Um, hormonal changes. Things that start to happen because the body... Is, is trying to get back to normal, or what it considers normal, or set point, okay? So this is the challenge. This is where like losing the 20 pounds is actually the easy part. Keeping it off is where the discipline really kicks in because what you need to do is you need to maintain that 20 pound weight loss for long enough, okay? Now, how long is that? It, well, it's gonna be different for everybody, right? You know, if you, maybe a couple of weeks and then you start to create you start to find yourself creeping back up to where you were. There's a certain point of time, and I can't tell you what it is, okay, where it could be a few weeks, it could be a couple of months, where once you've hit that point, whatever that point is, now you're able to maintain this new set point of, let's say in this example, 180. And then what you'll find over time is if you were to go up a few or down a few, you always find yourself back at that new set point, okay, or that new normal. So really what it comes down to is stick I like to say, and time, basically sticking to your program and pushing through that. Now, like I said, losing the weight is, just, honestly, it's kind of the easier part. Maintaining the weight loss is the hard part because you, you have to let the body, you're fighting the body, the body's trying to get back to 200 in this case, trying to get back to that set point. So you gotta fight it, you gotta stay consistent, you gotta keep exercising, you gotta keep paying attention to nutrition, maybe even more so like concentration-wise than you were before. But then you'll get to a point where that becomes the new set point. And if you were to deviate up or down, you're gonna find yourself back there. So each time you hit one of these set points, and whatever that set point is, you're gonna to have to kind of go through this until you get to whatever it is that your, your goal weight is, okay? Now, that's one of the reasons this you know, that you fight, you know, or it's difficult to maintain uh, weight loss. Um, there are some other things physiologically that happen, metabolically that happen. Um, 
but those things, not, so, not that you really can't do much about them, that's just, it's just the way they are. So for example, your metabolism is naturally going to slow because you, um, if you lose muscle, if you lose weight, um, your metabolism slows until you add more muscle. There's a whole bunch of stuff we don't need to worry about there, but through proper training and nutrition, that all kind of takes care of itself and you boost your metabolism, your hormone profile uh, in, improves and you have more energy and you burn more calories throughout the day and you maintain your weight loss. But until all that kind of settles into place, you're dealing with this whole issue here. Now, the other thing you're dealing with, I said one was, one was kind of the physiological, okay? The other one is the, uh, the psychological. And here's how this works, okay? This basically, the psychological side, essentially is when I deviate, so if I use that same example, there's me, right? And there's the scale, and it's locked in at 200, right? We identify ourselves. It's just, it's, it's human nature. We have what's called a self-image. And that self-image guides us. It's how we see ourselves in the world. So what ends up happening, believe it or not, is as you lose weight, you start to lose your identity. And what ends up happening is your self-image kicks in. Your self-image doesn't see you as a 180-pound fit person. It sees you as 200 pounds overweight or whatever the case may be. If, if, that's your, if, if you are overweight 200, whatever that is, it sees you at that 200. So what it's going to do is anytime you deviate from the norm, what you'll end up doing is the self-image kicks in, and usually it's some type of self-sabotage. And that self-sabotage is going to bring you back up to 200. So when we think of self-sabotage, oh, I spelled that right, Okay? Self-sabotage would be things like discontinue your exercise program. Um, not, you know, being as diligent about your nutrition, not cooking your own food again, or, um, you know, finding excuses to go back to, you know, maybe the previous type of nutrition where you're eating more, you know, processed foods and junk foods and things of that nature, whatever it is, you, you get cocky and you will, well, I've got this now, so I don't need to work as hard, right? I can, I can have cheat meals a little more often, those kinds of things. And what you do is you, you basically rationalize, which is rationing lies to the mind, you, and you self-sabotage yourself back up to 200. Now, if you were to go up to, say, 210, well, you don't see yourself as 210 either. So what do you do? You tighten things up and you become more consciously aware of what you're doing and you end up back at 200, right? So it's the same up and down thing. How do we fix it? How do we not self-sabotage ourselves? Well, it takes, once again, it takes time doing the thing that you're doing that got you there. That's why having a support group and being around like-minded people who are trying to you know, achieve the same health and fitness goals as you are, are so important. This is what we love about you know, the Transformation Club because people who lose weight and stick around, right? what they do is they put themselves into an environment that supports what they're doing. It supports this new uh, self-image. So now, instead of the self-image being tied here, Okay, whatever this new number is, let's say it's 180 in this example, now we get rid of that and the self-image starts going there. And we see, our, we see ourselves and we're comfortable with ourselves. Now, things really get powerful and strong when we no longer associate self-image period with the scale, okay? And we separate the two, right? And we understand that we are not the number on the scale. That doesn't define us. That's a whole other conversation. But my point is, when somebody who's 200 pounds and they've been 200 pounds forever, or whatever that number is, 250, 300, 400, doesn't make a difference, right? Whatever overweight number that is, you identify with that. And that's who you see yourself as. And then when you lose the weight, that doesn't go with your identity and you end up self sabotage And it sounds crazy that you would self-sabotage, but if this is you, if you've been this up and down person, stop and think about it. Yeah. Every time I seem to get ahead, I find a way to self-sabotage. I either stop working out, I don't eat as well, I you know, go back to my old habits. What is that reason? Okay, well, you got two things working against you. Physiologically, you need to lock in the new set point. And psychologically, you need to reprogram the self-image and love where you're at and accept that that is you 
the new you and you can stay that way. And then of course the next step is to just disassociate altogether from that and understand you were not the scale, you were not a member, you were awesome as you are. And then this is just a reflection of, I wanna be healthier and more fit and I'm gonna stay there. Okay, whole other story. But I wanna share that with you today. Um, two things that you know are working against you. So if you can start to understand these, you can actually get these things working for you. If you got any questions, uh, let me know.